Something always makes me come back to talk about this group. Maybe it's because their songs touch my soul so deeply. Perhaps it's their raw talent and relentlessness and inspiring work ethic. Or maybe, <laughs> maybe it's just because they're so uh, good looking. I feel like there's nothing I can say about them at this point that you guys wouldn't know about. You guys have heard me talking about them for probably hours now. Well, I figured enough talking about them. Time for a taste test. If you guys have ever tried to get concert tickets before- Oh no! What is this? I don't need to tell you how hard it was to secure these. Well, thankfully they did give us a code to buy the tickets early, but like hundreds of thousands of people had the same code. Thankfully, we were able to clutch four tickets. Nosebleeds, of course, but, you know, life goes on. <laughs> so, with my bags packed, a ticket to LAX, and some SoFi Stadium nosebleed seats, we headed out to California. LA, Tinseltown, La La Land, the City of Angels, and home of the worst traffic jams in the United States. We were headed to Inglewood. After a quick car rental, a stop at the Amazon grocery store for some Red Bull, Praise Bezos, and a $100 event parking spot, BTS, 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 we were finally there. All right, Vera, who are you excited to see? V. Why V? Because he's freaking hot. Matt, who are you most excited to see? Jimmy. Why? Because he's freaking hot. <laughs> SoFi Stadium, one of the newest and largest stadiums in California, welcomed the overwhelming masses of BTS fans. It was one of the highest concentrations of K-pop fans I've seen in my entire life. Roughly 50,000 people were lined up around the entire stadium. 50,000 army strong. That's, <laughs> that's bigger than some cities. While we were in line, we had time to chat with a few of our fellow army. One of the things that really caught my attention was how fans came in all shapes, sizes, and walks of life. They're just gorgeous and then also their music once you just start really digging in it's their work is so amazing their body of work is so impressive just no matter how you look at it so my, da my daughter's been army for about five years so she oh. kind of got me into it wait so you're not you're not here with your daughter we had tickets for the dallas concert oh, and then they canceled the tour and i got these and she's like i can't miss two whole days of school oh. <laughs> but i had to get permission from my daughter i'm like are you gonna kill me if i go and you don't israel. we came from israel all the way from israel to the concert yeah, so we bought tickets for yesterday, uh -huh. and we like didn't have side. seats, we didn't have seats, we sat on the stairs. Someone took our seats and we sat on the stairs. So we wanted to like have a better experience tonight, and all the tickets are like for 5k, so we can't get that. So we're but trying we to get for like 1,000 yeah, for a ticket, like 1K, but it's not enough, it. it's not even enough, and we're outside, we don't have tickets. Ten hours we to started here. driving at 9pm, and then we got here at 6am. Got my car towed, and now I'm here through Uber. Yeah. Oh, look, it's Tanjiro. What? Tanjiro! I wonder who his bias is. <laughs> the SoFi Stadium is still brand new. It only opened last year, and this is only the seventh concert ever performed at the stadium. The structure was imposing and quite frankly intimidating. As we walked down the long concrete hallways, BTS songs old and new blared with the audience clapping and singing along. Oh, bottle water, water, five dollars. And five dollar water bottle. It should be the best water I've ever drank in my life. And when the boys finally came out, well, I don't have to tell you guys. I've seen their music videos hundreds of times, and their performances never fail to bring a smile to my face. However, actually being there and hearing them sing live, being in the same room as them, and uh, breathing the same air as them, it's an experience that's incomparable to any other. Despite the nosebleeds, we thoroughly enjoyed the performances, especially since it gave us such a full view of the entire stadium which was a treat when it came to the cool light stick animations. Being the very last day of the concert, Jin allowed us to celebrate his birthday with him.
And if that wasn't enough, Chris Martin from Coldplay came out as well to perform My Universe. And that was something that was exclusive to those in attendance on the very last day. And with that, the dream that I didn't want to end came to a close. The members of BTS concluded with some final words to the fans, and as painful as it was, it really felt like a farewell. At least, for a while. I feel so blessed and grateful that I could do this in this crazy time. This four nights is so precious. I hope this concert is not the end. I hope it is another thing. Let's always remember today until we meet again. <laughs> Isn't it all a little poetic that BTS's last overseas concert, uh, at least outside of Korea and Japan, took place in the same city as their very first concert? Again, it's like poetry, so that they rhyme. As they drove through the Los Angeles city streets for the last time in their foreseeable future, I wonder if they reflected upon that and how far they've come. You're so beautiful. Sugar, you're so beautiful. Of course, this is assuming that Jin and the others won't be exempted from military service about which there is plenty of discussion among Korea's National Assembly. If passed, the new law would revise the Military Service Act, and it's already been dubbed the BTS Law. As of right now, the status of BTS's enlistment has been granted a postponement by the South Korean government, but they're only in a state of limbo. Eventually, a decision will have to be made by the government to either go forward with their enlistment or formally exempt them. Really, only time will tell, but one thing is for sure, this won't be the last we see of them. Where are you guys from? Japan. Japan. Oh, you guys are from Japan? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you guys, you came here all the way to America just to see BTS. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> How was the concert? Yeah, that was amazing. Oh, I can't. It was amazing. I was, I blacked out. Like, I don't even remember it. Like, I have to watch it again. <laughs> that's one group that's like the Rolling Stones. Michael Jackson, the Beatles, all rolled up into one on super steroids. Long as I've been working for this company, like six and a half, almost seven years, I've never seen nothing like this. I thought it was really great, but fun. They're teaching the kids and, and technically everybody to love themselves. And, you know, they're just being such good influence, that's it. They are just what they are. Like, nothing can change how powerful they are. They are like starting to open the door, not just for BTS, but like for the whole K-pop and like the whole Asian culture. I feel like it's not just on a music level. They're so far beyond that. Like they speak at the UN, all the charities they do, you know, how much they put into stuff that's not related to music, it kind of comes together and makes the music even better. It kind of went by too fast, like a dream, <laughs> but I, I wouldn't trade it for anything. Perhaps it's appropriate that all of this is happening during the season of joy and grace and thankfulness. They've shared so much of their passion, their music, and themselves with the world. And no matter what happens next, I'm just happy that I was there for it.